Good morning, good morning, my precious friend. Thank you for joining us in this uh, talk show we have today in our studio. Uh, I'm pretty blessed to have all of you and who have a click watch or if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on uh, TV, I welcome you in the name of Jesus. So today, you know, this is the day when we know that many churches are reopening. Anyway, uh, very first one I want to introduce, uh, introduce who is with me, my beloved wife, Lena. Lena, it's good to have you here. Welcome in with me together. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's a so wonderful day, and it's so blessing to come to the house of the Lord. And it it's, is. it's so exciting. It's so uh, it's so the most wonderful time when we can come together and worship the Lord, and we know when, in whom we have assurance. And we are so excited to introduce you today, our wonderful, wonderful, beloved friend. It, her life is a miracle itself, and what she does, it's tremendously great job in the kingdom of God. And I, we are so excited that she's right now with us. It's Pastor Kadisha. It's, let's meet her. It's, nice. She is wonderful. Well, yeah. I am so, uh, I'm so honored. I'm so blessed to be in the house of God in this beautiful place that I just truly feel his presence and, and be with his precious, most anointed uh, children, leader, my brother and my sister. Uh, just uh, this is heaven. I'm just so honored to be here to have this precious time with both of you. And uh, it's just what a great honor to serve you and serve God's kingdom. And uh, I just want God to be glorified right now. I just want God to be glorified in our conversation and, and whatever that Holy Spirit want us to share. And he want me to share. Um, I'm all his. I say, Amen. Holy Spirit, speak. Amen. Pastor Kadisha, we welcome you uh, in the name of Jesus. Welcome to the house Thank of you. the Lord. This is really heaven. Look at this. Amen. This is really heaven here Amen. on it earth. Amen. Of course, the heaven which we are looking forward to, That's it's right. going to be much better. That's a but glimpse. still, a little yes. oasis here, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Praise and the Lord. I'm uh, sitting with the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I cannot disagree with you on this, you know. So, <laughs> praise oh, God, praise God. So, so awesome. uh, what is my point today? Um, we had the planning to invite you uh, for the show and ask you a few questions. So we're going to be looking like this is the interview, interview, which uh -huh. we're going to ask you because your life is a great testimony. And we want our viewers to hear it. Nice. So listen, uh, Pastor Kadisha, I know you're a pastor right now, but you came from Muslim family. You were Muslim before you became a Christian. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit, give us a glimpse of you meeting with Christ? Because if Muslim doesn't meet with Christ, they will be never convert to Christianity, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. So they're going to be stake to their religion, whatever it is. Just give us some glimpse of how you personally met with Christ. Amen. Well, uh, as you said, uh, my entire journey in life, it's all testimony. Uh, you know, it's all mm, God was at work. Mm -hmm. The day I was conceived in my mother's womb. That's the word says, isn't it? Amen. It says, the day you were conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you by name. And because of that, he, by his grace, he, in his timing, he will reveal himself. Right. It kind of right. allows us to go our own way, and then he, bam, shows up in your life. And, and he's alive. He's all power. He's all knowing. And he, in his divine hour and time, he meets with us. But the point is, it's up to us to choose to receive it, to believe it. That is the only crucial decision in our life that... We are the one who have to choose to believe that whatever that God is revealing, because he loves us so much, 
not only he came from heaven on earth to die for us for our sin so we can have salvation, but then also at the same time, he is like, like a mother hen, you know, just in the word says that he always above our circumstances and situations and moves in our lives to, keep, to tell us, I'm, I'm, I love you and I'm your God and come to me, baby, come to me, just because he loves us. The, and that's why, you know, I, I grew up and I was born in a very fundamental Islamic family and um, nine brothers, sister. My dad, a very hardworking man and a very awesome father. He did all his best to raise us and my mother too. But just because being under that whole system, the, you know, the culture and the religion, uh, well, of course, probably in today's, uh, with our knowledge, they may have failed in a lot of areas, but, but they did their best to raise us. Uh, but I was raised with a father that he was uh, very, he was not radical, but fundamentally, he was a devout Muslim. He was a leader of a mosque, uh, not to preach or teach, but he was leading worship, like a worships they have in their Islamic way, in their own ceremonies. They have, uh, they call it Ashura, Tasua, and uh, so he will be leading that. Also, he will be leading their prayer time and um, they, he had, in our city, he was pretty well known. He, my father was pretty well known in our city and because of that. And he had hundred because they would go out in the street, march, mm -hmm. and singing, and, and they're kind of doing their own things. But anyway, so he had hundreds of people following him on the street for those march, for the Islamic march and the, during their own ceremonies. So, uh, Pastor Gadisha, you believe that those people like your father, who were devout uh, Muslim believers, they are pretty much believe in this and serving God like they think this is legit how they serve God. They're pretty confident that they are right. What's the problem they have in their life when they serve Christ, when they come to the end of their life? Because I know that in the Muslim there is no forgiveness of sin. No. No. But they believe that uh, God is good and they somehow will receive them to heaven and forgive their sin. So how do they reconcile this dilemma? They, they can't until they come to know the truth because they're so brainwashed. Because uh, one of the areas that uh, I, I can share about my father himself and the last, day, the last night of his life that finally he came to the light. But before to come to that story, I wanted to say that how even myself, when I was back in Iran, I thought the only religion in the world is Islam. Right, because, because you didn't know anything else. Because we so don't when know you know only this, you that, know only That's this. the only book they give you, Quran, and that's the only thing you hear. You're born in an Islamic family, you're born in an Islamic society, and that's all you know. You think this is the truth, but you don't know the truth until you come to have the revelation of the truth. But until that moment, they really fully believe that what they are practicing, it is all they're serving real God. And to the point that even if they're killing people, if they do all kinds of wrong things, uh, beating up their wife. Uh, I was in Iran, and I witnessed myself when I went to Iran to visit for the first time. It was right at the moment that Khomeini took place. In, uh, their government took place in Iran. Uh, I went to visit Iran, and, and um, now the country is fully uh, under the uh, operation of Islam. Mm -hmm. And uh, they killed thousands and thousands of people out in the street, especially women, to cover, to start, because we were not covering ourselves at the time. When I grew up, I dressed up just like I'm here. But then when this Khomeini regime came, they said, now from now on, uh, Islam is going to rule and reign in this country. Because that's what the Quran says. Because that's this, uh, that is the spirit that 
I always say Islam is not a religion. Mm -hmm. I always say this. Maybe some people don't like to hear it, but that is the truth. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a spirit and use Muhammad to bring an ideology. It's an ideology right. and ideology. it's militant. Islam is militant. Why? Because when Muhammad started this whole thing, right. it was all politics and right. it was militant because he wanted to establish his own kingdom because right. he was under the operation of a spirit that, of course, it's an antichrist spirit. Right. So for people, for especially for precious Muslim to come to know this truth, if you go share anything, they cannot understand it. They actually get angry with you. Until God himself come upon them, until they choose to know the truth. They choose to hear it from God himself, not from people. So when, and the, another, uh, I was going to say, another reason that Muslim, they really believe in the book of Quran, because actually it's the Old Testament. It's all our Bible. So it is a word of God, but they changed it and twisted and perverted it to make it like it's all talking about Muhammad mm -hmm. and all the 12 Imams of, of Islamic uh, beliefs, you know, Islamic religion. So uh, they, the way they ch changed, like with Abraham's son, they said that was not, in the Quran says, that was not Isaac on that. Mm -hmm. Mount Moriah. It was, right. it was uh, Ishmael. Ishmael. And, right. and then yeah. when Jesus said in John 14, I go to the Father to send you the Holy Spirit, they said, Jesus says, I'm going to go to send you the Muhammad. So see how everything, even with the book of Isaiah, where that, the, the prophecy about our Jesus coming on a donkey, they said that was prophecy about Muhammad's coming on a donkey. I mean, uh, Muhammad came... 700 years, I mean, it's almost 600 years after Jesus, you know, and all that uh, changing and twisting the, the word of God, but because all the, the most of the law in the book of, uh, in the Old Testament, the Torah, it's in, the, in their Quran. Mm -hmm. So since it's the law of God, mm -hmm. the Ten Commandments, the all the Jewish, Jew, you know, all the Jewish law, it's in the Quran. Mm. So about kosher meat, it's in the Quran. Circumcision, it's in the Quran. But they claim it as their own. So they actually took it from the uh, Old Testament. Yes. So everything, or mostly, which is in the Quran, it actually came from the Torah. Itself. Well, think about it. Muhammad, when he came, uh, almost 600 years after 500 some years after Jesus. The Catholic Church was at work. So, and he married a woman that was a Jewish man, a woman, Khadija. And so he knew about- It's exactly like your name. That's right, that's <laughs> right. I always say my husband and I, I mean, he changed his name to Yeshua, but I said, uh, my husband and I, Muhammad me, we're, we're back to repent. Yeah, we're but by the, way, by the way, I just realized recently, and I was talking to my wife, and I say, listen, I found out that uh, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, right? Yeah. He had a wife, Khadisha. Yeah. So it was like your story. Like in, in my case, yeah. my father, it's Joseph and Mary. And Are I'm you the serious? oldest son, oh, you know? Sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a little Jesus. You're I'm a little, a little Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I love it. Uh, right. So that, that's why it. I needed. You're... That's why I needed to do this Jesus work. You know. Well, but... see, you 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 were under totally under the anointing of God. I wasn't. <laughs> I was operated under the Islamic spirit. But my father, uh, you know, the, all the Muslim, the right. precious Muslim. Right. When they read the Quran, they're actually reading the law of God. Right. So that's why they're fully believing in it which is, you know, the Ten Commandments is the Ten Commandments. Exactly. But what they're missing is that they, the, the plan of God through the Jewish nation, mm -hmm. so that's why Islam brainwashing them against the Jewish people. Right. So they hate Jewish people. So we had to train our church how to love Jewish people and mm -hmm. change their mindset about Israel. Israel. Anyway, so... 
So for Muslim to come and understand the full understanding of God's plan through the Jewish nation and God's plan about salvation and God's plan through the, all the prophets in the Old Testament, they must have the encounter with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, honestly, for a Muslim to come to know Jesus, it's a miracle. That is God's miracle. That's what I believe. That's what I'm asking you, that you uh, were a Muslim. I and was. if you were not, if you would never meet a Christ, if you would not have a meeting with Christ yourself, you would never switch, no. never convert never. to be Christian. Because I, was, I know I've, 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 I've been talking to many Muslim people. I have friends, Muslim friends, uh -huh. who we have nice uh, respectful relationship in a business, you know. And sometimes we talk about this a little bit with some of them, about the law of God. We talk about the uh, Muslim, Quran, Christianity, and everything. And um, I'm asking them questions. And they have lots of questions. They cannot answer me my questions. Uh, as soon as we start talking, they think, OK, well, you know, uh, they, they try to tell me, well, Jesus never claimed himself being uh, divine, being a God, I say, yeah, he did. You just didn't read the gospel. You just read Jesus' claim everywhere. And there's lots of uh, scripture about this one. So anyway, uh, he claimed to be God. And uh, uh, I was listening to many uh, kind of talk show when Muslim scholar uh -huh. and uh, Christian scholar, they talk to one another and they uh, uh, kind of presenting themselves. One of them presenting Muslim faith, another is presenting Christian faith. And then they, uh, you know, asking another question, talking about their view. Uh, but, but what I've seen that Muslim just, com they just completely denying and saying, whatever you tell them, they always have an argument. They just don't believe. They just say, no, this is not that. It was not legit. This is corrupt. This is this. This is this. This is like, hey, they don't want to even look at the Bible to see, yeah, Bible tells about Jesus as the son of God. And a son of God, because they say, "Yeah, we believe in Jesus, but Jesus is not the Jesus is not God Himself." But how God? How come the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, can be not God? Because they say, "Well, we are sons also. Well, we are sons, but but that's not what He's talking about, Jesus. So it's completely different." Anyway, how, how well, do you, you see know, this? Actually, they're not really even reading their own Quran. You know, they're not really reading it. They just to, listening because to honestly, some. if a Muslim really read their own Quran, they found Jesus in their own Quran. <laughs> Seriously, yep, yep. because the Quran itself it testifies who Jesus is. Yeah, you know yep. they call Muhammad, uh, Muhammad and Rasulullah. They call uh, Moses Khalilullah. They call Abraham. Uh, um, no, they call. Uh, no, they call Moses Kalamullah. They call Abraham Khalilullah, which this is all uh, Moses brought the law. Mm -hmm. Abraham was a friend of God. You know, Moses, uh, Muhammad was sent as a prophet of God. But then when they come to Jesus, they call him what? Ruhullah. It means Ruhullah means he is a spirit of God. Ruhullah means a spirit. Allah means God. So that means he is, in a sense, they're saying that he is God. In a sense, they're saying. So I do, one of the areas that I challenge Muslim, I say, can I ask you something? Uh, when, when it comes to the introducing a son, you say uh, he is like uh, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Ibn means Muhammad, son of Abdullah, naming the father to introduce the son. So they say Muhammad ibn Abdullah. That means he is the son of Abdullah. I said, but how come when you could, in your Quran it says Isa ibn Maryam? Means Isa, Jesus, they call Jesus Isa. Isa, he is the son of Maryam. So where is the father? Who's the father? You right. know, this is the question that we have to ask the Muslim. Why you say Isa ibn Bariya? You say Muhammad ibn Abdullah. You, you call the father. Yeah. So where is Jesus' daddy? So, and then also when you call Jesus Ruhullah, 
why you call Jesus Ruhollah? I said, and I always tell Muslim this, please don't listen to me. I know nothing. Don't, please, don't try to come to know God through me. Woe to you if you right, want right. to know God through me. I said, our God is alive, and he loves you so much. Just like the way he came into my dream, I was Muslim, 21 years, I was 21 when I came to this country. And then I joined a communist movement. I joined a, a group, they were atheists, because communist movement was at work in Iran, right. and growing because of Russia was trying to take over Iran right. and get it out of the hand of the America, and right. so they can, they can get the hold of the resources in Iran. Right. So communist movement was just rising up in Iran. And they had their organization here in America. So when we came, arrived here in Oklahoma City, actually in 1977, those uh, college students, they were waiting for us at the, at the airport. They picked us up, they found us apartment, and then the first, uh, I mean, the, the, that same next day or so, as soon as we arrived, they invited us to their meeting and they handed us the books from Marxism with Lenin, and there was a book uh, that um, the title was uh, what, is it, what is to be done? So we had to read that book, which has the answer to the solution, uh, or solution to the problems of the world, which is right. all about one class society. Right. So anyway, and coming from Islamic background as a woman, not having any identity, uh, you know, as a woman, right. and always being under the oppression, under the, you know, with, at my, when I, with my childhood, I was abused, and then I got married being abused because I was just a woman, nobody. <laughs> I had to just obey the man. Uh, so when I, I read this, um, that whole, uh, one class society, the doctrine of Marxism, I said, that's it. Now I know who I am. Talking about one class society, equality between man and woman, that I fell in love with that doctrine. Right. So I became looked, a radical, <laughs> radical communist, you know, and an atheist. I became a radical atheist. And I passionately, with every cell in my body, I hated God. Nobody could talk to me about God. I just, I, I, in my home, I had a picture of Lenin and Marx posting on my <laughs> wall. They were my God. Right, being a woman oppressed by Islam, you, yeah. you're looking for the equality, for the normal life, and you see Lenin has an answer. Yes, I said, so. this is it. Then now, that's the, now that's how we're going to solve the problem of our world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until seven years, I was radically involved in that movement. Radically, I cut my hair this short. I was wearing military outfit. I was ready to get a gun and go to Iran and shoot everybody. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, can't believe it, Kadisha. You were this way. <laughs> oh, you still don't know the other side of me. Come on. So anyway, and then 1983, when uh, Shah couldn't find all the leaders of the communist mm -hmm. movement in Iran, mm -hmm. Sawak, the Sawak of Shah. But Khomeini could, why? Through the religion of Islam. Mm. Because that religion brings you to a place to believe that you even ready to kill your own mother, father, brother, sister for Allah. So how strong this spirit can be that people are ready to kill their close people, even their friends, even relatives? It comes down to this as Paul says in book of Ephesians that our battle is with the blood and flesh, the principality right. and the spirit. So this is an antichrist spirit. And if we're not filled with the spirit of God, then it's so, it's really, it's simple to know that people get what? They get possessed with the spirit. They're yep. operating in that spirit. Possessed, that's, that's the right thing. So state. the whole operation and the mindset and the behavior it's not them anymore. 
It's the spirit that is using them until they get delivered. That's why Jesus, when he came on earth, what was his ministry? The, the only thing Jesus did, he cast out demons and healed the sick. Cast out demons, healed the sick. And then he even says in Matthew that he told uh, his disciple, the Matthew 12, I believe, that said, uh, this is his teaching to us, even us as his disciple today. What did he say to his disciple? Teach my word, declare or teach the gospel or teach right. his word, right. the word of God, heal the sick, raise the dead, clean the lepers, and then cast out demons. Exactly. This is the teaching. This is what Jesus asked us to do. Right. This is his teaching. Why? Because when we come to God, we must be it's people they hear the word they believe in Jesus but they're still under the operation of the old system or people coming from Islam they're still under the operation of the spirit of Islam until they're fully purged out they're fully delivered that's why if I didn't if we didn't practice that in our own church I probably would still be kind of puzzled that's why some people have problem with it but I, we had people in our church for hours. They were on the floor, <coughs> flipping over, jumping over the tables because the Spirit of God came upon them, and now they start purging out of the Spirit of Islam. So until they fully purged out, and then the Spirit of God came and dwelled in them by them believing in Christ, and now they're able to, to understand the Word of God. So when you say... It is really, it's, it's just because they are under operation of a spirit that it lies to them and it separates them from the truth, blinds them and make them deaf not to hear the voice of God and blinds them not to see the truth. Why Paul, God blinded Paul and had to go and to to the high priest to right yes. take the letters yeah because religious blinds people yeah. religious spirit blinds people and they so cannot you think, see the uh, truth so you think you think Alicia that uh, uh, in uh, Islam there is no salvation absolutely there is, not there absolutely is. not there is no I, and I share with you but you know even myself like if we say I, we have to be deliver from this evil mm -hmm. spirit. Um, even myself, after in 1983, I said, we lost our organization. We had no organization to be involved. I, now I lost my identity. I, I was living in a pits of hell, darkest time of my life. American hated us because the hostages took place. Thousands of Iranians got killed. They were about to deport us. And and we became poor, and now I don't have my organization. I have, again, back to my no identity. I attempted three times to kill myself. Wow. And Jesus was with me, the Jesus I didn't know. Wow. The day I had a ga gallon of gasoline poured upon myself wow. with a match in my hand in my backyard, and I was just keep trying to get this match going so I can blow up myself. So many times, I was like this, and it did not lead. Who stopped it? It was God. Amen. It was God. So in the midst of all that, uh, for the fourth time I attempt, and Jesus came to my dream. Did I have one Christian friend? No. Did I have anybody tell me who Jesus is? No. I was against God. I hated God. I, didn't, I knew nothing about Jesus. I never owned a Bible. I didn't know anything about church. Everything was foreign to me. So he comes to my dream. Uh, I, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through my entire... I have actually my testimony recorded, uh, and it's on YouTube. Mm. And so he comes to my dream, introduces himself, and then... Uh, he, when I came, I was in a beauty college. When I came and shared my dream 
to, to the people in a beauty college, not knowing God already ordained my path to be in this college. Five teachers, supervisor and receptionist, they're all Christian. And they all go to a four square church in Penryn. <laughs> wow. So he put me in that college. The college shut down a year later when I graduated. So in that college, uh, through this family, American beautiful family in that college, when I shared my dream, they took me to church. Never been in a church. They took me to church, and the pastor preached Bob. His name is Bob Bridge, and actually I, I, I saw him first 18 years after that, <laughs> eight years ago. And it was just totally God's divine appointment. But anyway, uh, his title was love. Mm -hmm. The love that I, it was foreign to me. The love that says forgive your enemy. The love says pray for your enemy. Foreign to me. And as foreign to the Muslim. Mm -hmm. We have Muslim like, I don't, how can I forgive my enemy? Right. Because Islam is teaching them eye to eye. And they right. call it qisas al qisas means eye to eye, tooth to tooth. And so when I, when this pastor started speaking, what happened? The spirit of God came upon me. I'm a woman fully lost, dead, shattered, hated God. The spirit comes. The first thing, the moment pastor was not praying over me, Nobody was praying over me. Nobody laid hand on me. But I clearly remember when the Spirit of God came upon me, I no longer see myself in that church. I no longer see anybody. All I saw, I'm in a place that I couldn't hear, I couldn't see, and there was a, a, a really uh, something like a wave, but it was dark. It's like a dark wave was like this coming out of me. So what did the first thing Holy Spirit did to me? delivered me. The Holy Spirit delivered me. He took that spirit out of me. I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say, I want to hope that everybody understand. First, God, he delivers us. We have to be set free, like coming out of prison. We have to be set free first. First. Out and of the then, spiritual. Then we go through the uh, spiritual growth. Right. And coming to grow, like you're now you're in a ground zero. Mm -hmm. Now you start growing like a baby coming out of mother's womb. So now, first he did, I didn't understand it at that time. I was like, I was going like this, you know. And the lady that took me there, Judy, she later tapped on my shoulder she, because she saw all my movement. And she said, are you okay? I said, no, I'm not okay. Something just happened to me. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me, right? Yeah, and <laughs> then the Spirit of God started dwelling in me. When it dwelled from within, first I felt lots of love. But then I said, all I know is the power inside of me that says God is, God is real, God is alive, and his name is Jesus. But I still don't know who Jesus is. Right. Right. Then God directed me to go to, through many different people. I ended up in a BSF Bible study fellowship for six years that I learned the Bible, studied the Bible from Genesis all the way because now I have to know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. I'm still struggling with Jesus being God. I'm still struggling to believing in God. And so through six years study, I finally came to have a through a lot of surgery, spiritual surgery. I was in God's surgery room, so I came to know who God is, and I began my journey with God, and I end up, at that time, I knew nothing about Iranian church. Not, I didn't even think. I thought I'm the only Iranian Christian on earth. And so I, I grew up, for the first 15 years of my Christian life, I grew up in American church. You were kind of, in the beginning, you were Muslim, uh, atheist, right? Atheist, communist. So That's you believe, right. like as, as what you say, Pastor Kadisha, you believe that in the Muslim uh, faith or in the Muslim dominion, there is the demons who, uh, who keep people captive. Yeah, they are because, under the bondage. Because it's so clear. 
when you're not in the light, you're in a darkness. Mm -hmm. And right. God, Jesus said in John 8, verse 12, I am the light. If we're not in the light, so you're in a darkness. So who operates in the darkness? Demonic forces. Yes. Because they keep you in a darkness so you can't see the truth. You have to come to the light. Mm -hmm. And for you to come to the light, God himself, just ask God. It just ask God. I, I had so many questions in the beginning of my Christian life that pastor could not answer it. Actually, I would get angry with the pastor. Or the other leaders in the church, my teacher, Bible study teacher, couldn't answer it. But then when I went to God himself, God clearly and through the power of the Spirit, he revealed the mystery of his cross. He revealed the mystery of his trinity. Not that I understood it, but it made me to believe it by faith. Right. So right. I believe. I said, all I know, I believe. I believe the work of the cross. I believe Jesus, he is a son of God. I believe that I am washed in his blood and empowered in the Holy Spirit. Now I am a child of God. I believe I am the, if I die today, I'm going to be in the heaven with him. And that was my father's challenge that my father, when he came uh, miraculously, he was 72 years old. By God's miracle, he comes to the United States. Wow. And he's, this is a guy, he is fully Muslim, you know. Imam. Imam. Like Imam. <laughs> you people, know? Uh, people who yes, lead Muslims. They worship you know? my dad. I mean, right. the guy, he was a big time leader in, in our city. So he comes to our, he comes here. We're all Christian. My, me, my son, and, and, and my daughter, and my husband. And so now this guy, he is in a battle with us. Like, but he loved us so much. He was not radical. He said this to me. He said, Khadija, you know, I, I honestly, I, uh, I'm just so glad that now you, because you were atheist, you didn't believe there is a God. At least you believe there is a God. That's enough for me. <laughs> so so that was, was his first joy. That at least you believe in you, God. At least you, you believe know. in God. You are not like an unbeliever. <laughs> because I was so radically became atheist that my dad was so upset with me. And, and so when he found out I'm a Christian, he said, it's okay. Even according to their Islam, like when I went to Iran, uh, about seven years after, you know, the first time, uh, my own sister turned me in to the government. So when I went to her, her and I said, I'm your sister. Why you want me dead? Why did you report me? And they were all, they said, you cannot leave Iran because now you reported, they're looking for you. They hold one of our relatives that I was at their home for two days asking them, where is Khadija? But miraculously, God brought me out. So here. They could she, have killed you there. Oh, I, 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 the first thing they would have done, they would have not let me get out, and right. then they would take me to prison. Right. Because my sister reported me. This is how this spirit operates. This spirit, it brings them to a place of submission that they really believe because it tells them, and the Quran says, if you kill this uh, person, infidel. that infidel, that was especially if you were Muslim before and now you're a Christian, the Quran, that's what my sister, I went to her home that night. I said, I just wanted to know, why you want to kill me? Why you want me dead? She opens her Quran and she reads her Quran to me and it says, based on this surah, my prophet Muhammad said that you're a shirk. Shirk means unclean. Because you blaspheme Allah and Muhammad by claiming Jesus as a son of God. Wow. So your blood has to be shed for Allah. So my other sister was there, that she's here right now. And she also was part of the Hezbollah. So these are my whole family were part of Hezbollah. And, and their covering is like three layers like one layer on the head and then one layer around the, and then the chador. She took everything off as she was listening to this sister that wanted to kill me. And she said, I didn't know the Quran says that. And she said, oh yeah, because you don't read your Quran. Mm -hmm. And which is true, if they read the Quran, they know what the Quran says. 
And she said, I don't believe, what kind of a God is this that tells me that I have to go kill my sister? And then the other sister was there. We were, we are four sisters. And then she said, all I know, this woman for four months, now I'm there four months. And she said, all I know, all this four months, all we saw from her, love. She loved us. She served us. And if there is one person among us that was living righteous, it's her. Look at all of us. We all lie. We all hate each other. We're ready to kill each other. And you want to kill her? That's the other sister. Wow. But this sister, this Muslim, that she was really another radical Muslim, she took her veil off. She took her chador off. She said, you know what? I want to believe in her God. <laughs> <laughs> So you got at least one of your sister back uh, to the Christ. Oh yeah, to the she, Christ. she she gave her heart to Jesus, and and now she's here. All her family are a believer. But my father, going back to my dad, which that was absolutely God's miracle. When he came here, he was very challenged with all of us. So every time we sat on a table to eat, and we wanted to pray, and he would grab her for his fork and hit the plate, so then he can hear our prayers. So, but after the, now, she, he was with us six months. The last month of his life, he said, we could see the changes. Like, he started questioning. Now, one of the most biggest questions that he had, Khadija, you think God will forgive me? God will forgive my sin. I said, Dad, you pray five times a day, and each time you pray, you pray for two hours, and you still have no assurance of your, that you're going to be forgiven? Forgiven, right. She, he said, well, yeah, of course. I have to go be judge. I said, yeah, but you will never satisfy wrath of God upon your sin mm -hmm. because you already know that you broke the law of law. He goes, yeah, I know. I, I, I said, first of all, tell me. What kind of a sin have you committed to your life? <laughs> but, Just tell me, I want to know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and then I said, I said, but that, because they believe in, like, if we say repent, uh, so God will forgive us. I said, yeah, Dad, but, but then you say, I'll be judged. He said, yes, I'm going to be judged. I said, well, the God that I serve, I don't have any problem. If I die today, I have this full assurance that I'm going to be in his presence because he paid the cost of all my sin. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the last night of his life, we didn't know dad is going to die next day. This is the last night. God's grace was upon him. So again, he started questioning again. Now it's like almost like 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. He again, so... So you think uh, that if I go there, my God is not going to forgive my sin? I said that. You say it because based on your religion. Right. But if you want to know what Jesus says, then Jesus says, no, if you believe in him, then you will not be judged based on what he did on the cross. And that night that he said, okay, I want to know what Jesus said. So I, Holy Spirit was upon us. Holy Spirit was leading me what scripture, what passage, what chapter to read to him. So I started with Isaiah. And no, I'm sorry, I take it back. He started talking about the law. And then I said, Dad, can I read you? So I, I went to the Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. and, and I read him all the law, the kosher meat, even the namaz they do. That is the, all the, 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 all the, rules and law with the namaz, it's in the Jewish law, how to right. wash their hand and, right. and how to pray. And then also, uh, when I read him all the, about the kosher meat, all the law of God that was given to Moses, and he was like, wow, these are in the Bible? I said, yes, Dad. He said, I said, yes, Dad, these are the law of God was given to Moses. He said, with the same law, it's in the Quran. I said, okay, Dad, who came first, Moses or Muhammad? Right. He said, well, of course, Moses. I said, do you think God would, like, 
repeat his law to another person, God, he always says it one time and it's done deal. Right. I said, God gave his law to Moses, dad. So you have to think, where did you Muhammad God when he was in that cave sitting? Did whatever he brought to you, you have to think that he brought, he brought something to you that was already done and it was already finished and it was already said. He brought it to you to make it as his own. Oh, the, another thing is circumcision. He oh. said, I thought circumcision, it only belonged to Islamic law. Right. And he came to realize that, no, it was not Islamic law. This was a, a, the, the, the pillar of the Jew, Judaism. So anyway, then eventually he softened up and then he said, okay, I want to know what Jesus said. So after he found out the, the all the law in the Quran is already was given in the uh, old, uh, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, then he, saw, he said, okay, I want to know what Jesus said. So God directed me. I started with Isaiah 53, and I was going back and forth between Isaiah and Book of John and the Book of Matthew. So I was keep comparing them. And then I started at 10 o'clock. At that time, I was not in a, like I said, I was not in an uh, Iranian church. I had not an Iranian Bible. I thought I'm the only Iranian Christian on earth. <laughs> so, and yeah, my husband was sitting with me. So I was reading it in English, and my husband was interpreting it for him. So as we were back and forth sharing the gospel, sharing about Christ, and then he said, um, well, you know, um, but Muhammad, I said, he said, but do you want to know what Muhammad said about uh, heaven? I said, I kind of know, but if you want to say it, so he opens his Quran, and he reads what Muhammad said. So Muhammad says, when man goes to heaven, all these virgin... 72 virgins. <laughs> yes, comes. And, the good work. <laughs> yes, and feed you, give you... There is a you barely handling one woman here, and you want to have 72 there. <laughs> and so I kept listening, and Yeshua kept telling me, don't get upset, just listen. So, and, and he goes on and on about heaven, and then I said, okay, Dad, obviously heaven is all about man. And these women, virgin, and their, their, your Quran says there are, their hair is light as a, 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 a sun, and their eyes is as a color of the uh, river, so or, or the water. And I said, obviously talking about the blonde woman. So even blonde have more fun in heaven, and we don't. So <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, blonde even have fun in heaven too, not only on earth. You see. <laughs> so and then uh, I said, so what about us women? He said, oh yeah, it talks about women too. So women when they go to heaven. They're going to be with a man on same age. Here, Yeshua got upset. He says, I don't like to listen to all this. <laughs> so, because anyway, he's older than you yeah, now. So he's, he's older than me. And he, Will I give my wife there or not? Uh, yeah, he says, I don't like to hear. He says, okay, stop here. And then my father started laughing. He goes, I, oh, I feel so sorry for you. He won't even leave you alone in heaven. <laughs> so anyway, so right there, I said this. I said that. Do you think this is really God? Hmm. I said, Dad, the reason Jesus, he said, so what did Jesus said about heaven? I said, because Jesus could not even talk to Nicodemus. He said, I talk about earth, you don't understand it. What right. if, if I say anything about heaven, you fully right. don't understand it. And I said, Dad, for you to come to the know what's in heaven, it's by faith. You believe in God, that he came from heaven on earth, so then to purify you, you can have the indwelling of his spirit because we were separated from God. The spirit of God no longer was in us, with us. So we became dark and death, dead. And the spirit of death is working upon us. The sin, it's power of sin is upon us. You have to be washed away by him. The holiness come through him. The sin will be washed away by him, not by your religious law, practicing law. He has to wash you. He has to purify you. He has to cleanse you. You have to come to him. And then when you are purified and clean, the Holy Spirit comes, and the Spirit of God will tell you 
the, the mystery of heaven, the mystery of the cross. I said, I cannot tell you. You have to come to him because that's what Jesus did. Just, and then I made an illustration about the baby in the mother's womb. I said, when you were in your mother's womb, if God himself came to you and told you what is waiting for you on earth, could you understand it? Right. Your brain was not Until ready out of to the understand, to digest all that. You had to be born from your mother's womb to come on earth, and then you will understand what's on earth. Your brain can understand it. I said, for us to understand what's in heaven, you have to be born in that kingdom. You have to walk in that kingdom in order to understand the life in that kingdom. So that's why you're like in another womb, another incubator, which is earth. You need to grow until fully you are ready to be born, which is your death. That's your first death. So you die physically, but then you're born spiritually. That's your second birth. You're born spiritually into his kingdom. Now, just like you came out of your mother's womb, you can understand the life on earth. You're going to be born out of this earth and walk in his kingdom and understand the life and kingdom to become his citizen. Honest, God is a presence and God is witness. Right. He got up. We started at 10. This is 12.30 midnight. He got up. He threw his Quran. He picked up my Bible that was on table. He stood up and he said, Khadija, I want to believe in this. This is the truth. Wow. I know this is the truth. The very last day of his he life. He said, Khadija, I'm 72 years old. 50 years of my life, I was practicing Islam and believed in, worshipped Allah. But now, what am I going to do? So it was all wasted, 50 years wasted. I said, no, Dad, this was the only way that you thought that's, that's the way of worshiping. You love God. Right. You were just robbed from the truth. Ignorant. And God knew that. God knew that out of ignorance, you're worshiping this dead God, this false God. So he loves you so much. He knows your heart. He brought you here that actually my sister brought up a great point. I said, um, he brought you here through your own child right. to know who true God is. And all you have to do tonight, you're so worried about your sin. I said, all you have to do, just believe in him. He wash away all your sin. He will purify you. And when, and you, when you die, then there is no condemnation. That's what Jesus says. I didn't come to condemn you. I came to set you free. Right. And I said, all you have to do, believe. And you're going to be set free. And you're going to, as you die, you're going to be in his presence. Isn't it amazing, like, tough man who believe all his life uh, in Islamic, Islam religion, and after the end of the, his life, he, he wasn't sure. When we, and he was led to Christ through your, his own child. Yeah. And woman. A woman. You, to, I love to that. Jesus. So Isn't not just, not just by daughter, but by woman. Uh, to who a woman. they actually, Islam oppresses. Yes. They, they think about women lower than the men. They even in a kingdom, when they come there, they want the 72 virgins. I don't know where they're going to get so many virgins for every one of them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I have a problem with this, you know? So uh, oh, I think if there would so be enough, funny. just one virgin for them, you know? No, 72, my goodness. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I think that enemy was... Uh, his plan was just by religion, fool people, by religion. Because atheistic people can be convinced that there is a God. There's lots of evidence of God, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I can convince you as an atheist that, listen, you still need to consider that there is someone who is God. Because you cannot say that everything appeared and showed here just by itself. You know, yeah. and uh, it was easier for me. I, I dealt with the atheists uh, all my life, you yes. know, because yes. I was living in the Soviet, Soviet Union, yeah. and uh, there was so lots of atheism, and I was dealing with them all my time, all my life, and I was telling them they were saying, "Well, Vasily, you believe in something. What if this is not true?" 
I say, well, that, that's okay. I live like as you live, the same life. The only thing what I don't do, I don't drink, I don't get drunk, I don't smoke, I don't curse. I'm being good. You're I don't a good steal. person. Is it, the, is it the bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. Okay. Then what I'm losing? They say, well, what, you, you're losing, you don't have fun. Why don't I have fun? You can drink a wine. I say, well, you can drink a wine. The only thing is I don't need to drink a wine to have fun, you know, to have life. And, uh, but, saying, but, but consider this. If this is what I believe is not true and we're going to die and nothing is there, then what did I lose? Actually, nothing. And what if everything is there? What did you lose? Exactly. You lose everything. That's good. And they That's were great. saying, mm, That's very well, you know what I'm saying, you lose everything. You need to consider. So for the, for the atheists, you can mm -hmm. say this one. But for the religious person who says, I believe God, they really consider themselves right, righteous people, and then at the end of the story, convince them that they are wrong, it's really tough. You know? Do you know how many Muslims came to Christ uh, through, not only through dreams like I did. I mean, I wasn't Muslim. I was atheist, actually. Right. Uh, but um, in Iran, this is a number one country in the whole world, fast-growing Christian, Christianity. Yeah, Christianity is growing. It's number one in Iran. And it's mostly it's through their dreams and vision. Wow. They come... Mm -hmm. And they have dreams, they have visions, and of course the satellites mm -hmm. and all the messages that go through the internet. Thank God for at least one thing. I thank God for internet. It's the, <laughs> it's the gospel of Christ. It's well, that's what I like. Preached all over the world. You I'm know. saying because my preaching's going to these satellites, uh -huh. and my teachings go. So I want to even increase much more to give my brothers and sisters That's there awesome. that who need so the work, awesome. you know, God. I that believe, is, because... I'm so proud of you. That's so awesome. And they need it. And they do. People are seeking for truth, and truth is only Jesus. Which is like my only father, Jesus. if he didn't mm -hmm. hear the gospel. Yeah. So if, when you didn't tell, uh, did, did, it was the last night for him? Yeah, and, and he said, I want to believe in Jesus. This is, this is the truth. I want to believe in this. And as he was walking away, he, was, he looked very exhausted, very tired. And he said, Khadija, can you pray for me tonight? Wow. I want to see Jesus. That was amazing. And next morning, at 7 o'clock in the morning, he got up. Uh, he, he, my father was a very good-looking man, tall, really handsome, handsome, and but very Big guy. He was right, a you big came guy. from him, so yes. even in your 60s, you're looking very good. <laughs> well, no, but he was a big guy. He was like right. his hands. I mean, he was just a big man and very tall. And he, uh, but he was very athletic. Actually, my dad was a very athletic man. Mm -hmm. And he loved jogging, exercise, and uh, do weight. He did a lot of weightlifting and all this. So, and he was a hunter when he was young, too. He was a hunter. And um, so he got up at 7 o'clock in the morning, and it was in uh, January 1998. And, um, and it was actually, the date was 17, January 17, 1988. And, uh, and it was raining. So he got up. He did not even look at me, nothing. He just got up his bed. He put his hat on and his raincoat on, and he was just walking. And I said, Dad, where are you going? He didn't even look. I was in the kitchen getting ready to go to my, I had my salon at the time. I, was, I had my business. So I was getting ready to go to work. And he said, the only thing he said, he said, I have to go. That was the only last word I heard from my, from my father. He said, I have to go. And then my husband, he was upstairs. He was yelling at him like, hey, uh, Mr. Baradzadeh. It's, it's raining outside. You can't go. He's, and he did not even answer him. He just walked out, and he never came back home. Wow. Because at 7 o'clock he left. Yeshua left the home around 8 o'clock to go to work, his work, his job, his business. And he found him out in the street on Gold Country by our house, the road, Gold Country. So he found him. He was on the ground. And, and some ladies found him and called the ambulance. So there was ambulance and two police cars were there. So, and by the time Yeshua got there, he said, 
his heartbeat was just a little bit, just little. beating a little, very slowly, and his eyes was open. So he said, I just, because of the experience we had the night before mm -hmm. that we shared the gospel, and mm -hmm. he opened his heart, and he said, I want to see Jesus. So he said, I laid hand, and I, uh, and I said, Jesus, please don't let him die. He asked for you. He wanted to believe in you. So please, just please meet with him and help him. And he said, as soon as I was praying to Jesus, then dad, he closed his eyes and no more heartbeat. Wow. And so it was absolutely miracle. It was God's grace upon my father that God brought my father in the last six months of his life to not in, he got a visa to the United States, but he got a visa to his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, Praise and, the Lord. and that just, uh, it, was a <coughs> it was a devastating time to lose my father and to see, but, and I had to. Now you think 72 is pretty young still. Yeah, it's still. My husband is 75 right now. Right. But right. he's, you know, I, I, I did question God. I was in a battle with God. Why did you let him go? Mm. He just asked for you. He's, he could have he could have gone back to Iran and talk and God said no actually I was waiting for him to say it with his mouth right. God said he was ready to go home but I wanted him with his own mouth right ask from me and receive me right. so he can have his salvation mm -hmm. because if he went back home he would have be persecuted because of being pretty well known as a Muslim man he said, and he would he he would have lost his he lost the truth that he received here. Right. And God said, No, I was just waiting for him to have his salvation, and right. that's it. I'm, my business is done with your dad. So he said the, he couldn't go back. He could, he would have been persecuted. He would have lost yeah. it. The most important that he actually was given a chance to receive Christ into his life. That's yeah. That's and what God said. And you know, the Paul said. says in Romans chapter ten, verse nine. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord Amen. and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's it. That's how God did it with my dad. It's like so he simple. was just waiting for my dad. He said, I was just waiting for him to just say it. I want to see Jesus. That's amazing. I, I just want to, you know, as we continue, I want to... Um, that's amazing. Uh, I want to say that this is amazing testimony. Mm. Amazing testimony. To God be the glory. He I gets all you, the glory. He, you experienced uh, amazing, amazing testimony and the grace of God in your life. Amen. He, so that's why when we see some people like you were mm -hmm. there now, we know that those people need Christ and we are to pray for them. And we Absolutely. are to serve yes. and help them to come to this point because many of them, they are just lost. Well, that's our ministry. We, we until to this day, for past 25 years, we're ministering to Muslim and we take the gospel to them. But we know it's not an easy job. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, you know, we have to face the spirit of Islam. Mm -hmm. But that's why we have to be fully equipped. Right. Fully equipped with God's knowledge with God's wisdom and God's understanding. Right. And, right. and, and follow Jesus' instruction. Right. You know, because Jesus said how to take the gospel to these people. So in a lot of area, unfortunately, sadly, with the grief in my heart, I failed because we forget when the members come and they're operating in a kind of a destructive way the mm. appropriate way, and instead of being mad at them and, and rebuking them, we have to rebuke the spirit that it's at work with them. Mm. We have to right. recognize that a spirit. We're not only dealing with the members. We're dealing right. with the spirit that it's at work with our members, mm. that they come, and they're coming to know who Christ is. So that's why our job as pastors we have a greater job than just preaching the gospel. Right. Just teaching them the word. It's a greater job is to also bringing them out of the captivity, 
not only of a strong hold they have to spend time and, and to know how to help them to come out of, but also to also to cast out the spirit, because that's what Jesus said to the disciple. He said, he said, go preach the gospel, seek the hill, raise the dead, clean the lepers, and cast out demons. Exactly. And his ministry on earth was this. He would cast out demons heal and the heal sick. the sick. Right, right. And then what did he say? He said, the kingdom of God, because they asked him, the Pharisee, who are you? What are you doing? He said, I am casting out demons in the spirit of God. So this is the time that the, the, the kingdom of God is upon you. So now, by the work of the cross, that kingdom, that spirit is in us. That now, from now on, it is his church. The mandate is on us to do what Jesus did on earth. So if we fully follow his instruction, his teaching, and the power and authority that also he says in Luke 10, verse 19, he says, I, I'm paraphrasing all his verses. Um, I gave you full authority to trample over scorpions and snakes. And so if we really come and operate in exactly full teaching of Christ, I believe, I believe strongly that we have uh, a, the church today, it can, we will have a different church. You know, I think that one of the areas the church is failing right now, we're losing our members, you know, or, or ch church is not alive and thriving in the spirit because they're not operating, they're not rooted in the word of God, they're not operating in the spirit of God, and us as a leader, we're not really, we're, if we just, just keep preaching, just preaching, teaching, while there are so many spirits at work in the church, right. in God's church, you know. So we need to take care of the spiritual realm first in Absolutely. order that the word would be reached. You know, the people would get the word because if people are being uh, oppressed by demons and being demonized, we, we're just saying demonized when demons are influencing exactly people. True. And if we don't work and take care of this uh, field first, don't prepare the, the, the field, you know, for the sowing the word, then we are sowing and it's going to be like a seeds coming into the rocky field, you know, and it's going to be, it might not produce any good fruits. That's yeah. probably we see the church as being not that much effective many times. And I'm not saying church is not effective. Church is effective, but I'm saying church can be even more effective if church would take uh, care of spiritual things first, like clean, cleaning this, uh, 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 what people have problem with demons when they are being demonized. Mm -hmm. So many demonized people, even in the church. Yeah. Even today, and, and I think as a pastors, we need to prepare this way. But again, what we have, what kind of influence do we have? We preach, mm -hmm. we teach, that's our influence, right? So, well, yeah, we, you know, look at it, especially during this quarantine, how many preachers we had? Thousands. Exactly. Grab the, you know, sitting behind the, and preaching, preaching, preaching. But uh, are we really helping people to come out of their captivities. Right. Because, yes, they're listening, and they're like, oh, uh, I love Pastor Vassils, what she, he's, he's teaching is much better than Khadijah. Mm -hmm. but, so they're, what they're doing, they're only listening to us, but right. they're not really or set free. They're right. more connected to us than connected to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So that's why they're easily we can lose them in this world that all day long they're sitting and listening to all these news, mm -hmm. watching the stuff junk on internet, and we're wondering why our church is not live in the word of God and not in the spirit of God, why they come with this kind of bizarre attitude. Right. And God, during, praise God for this quarantine, because there was a revival took place in our church. Our members are spiritually grown 
that we never seen them grown like this. Just, they're not coming to the church, but they're on this prayer line every day. We cannot believe the dreams they have, the visions they have, the scriptures they bring, the way they pray. What me and Pastor Bita and my husband, we're just blown away. Yeshua, the other day, said, I can't believe the way church is growing in the spiritually. Why? Because now they're not for, attached to us. Right. They're sitting home, reading the word, and listening to the prayers, and they're going rooted. And, but the more revival took place in me right. as their pastor. I mean, God had convicted me in so many areas, brought me, you know, reminded me of the members that I was dealing with them with their inappropriate and a bizarre attitude. You know, like Josh McDowell said the other day, I was on a prayer line mm -hmm. with almost more than 50 pastors from all over the world. And the guest speaker was Josh McDowell. And he said a very profound three most important issues and problem of the church today. And this is church, not the world, church. Right. He said pornography, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. and loneliness. Mm -hmm. And he said, my question is, OK, we're all upset. We want the church to open up. OK, your church is open. Everybody's coming. Are you ready? The church is ready. The pastors are ready for helping their members with pornography, mm. depression, and loneliness. Yeah. That just wrecked me. I mean, I just, I just for pa past two weeks, I've been just crying, you repenting. See, I don't even know if I want to talk about this, right? You know, because it is real. It is truth. I mean, nobody, shh, shh, don't talk about it, but it is true. We, yeah. we do have that in our church. It is, it is. There's a and, problem and, which exists. I, yeah, and I, I asked myself, and God reminded me of mo two individuals that left the church because I rebuked them of their sin. I told them, like, the, you, you cannot talk like this. You cannot behave like this. And right. God said, do you know where you failed? You didn't, you didn't rebuke the spirit that was at work with that person. Mm -hmm. You didn't cast out the spirit. He said, you just told the because person. in the past, I did. I, we had people that were speaking to us. And honestly, Pastor Beto, one of them, she grabbed her. It, it was a guy. She grabbed her back, his back <laughs> neck and collar and shoved his head in a sink and start commanding, get out in Jesus' name. Get out. And that guy for almost an <coughs> hour and a half on the floor purging out, just vomiting. Mm. And then he was fully set free, and then was indwelled with the Holy Spirit, and he was fine after that. Mm. So he said, God clearly reminded me of that. He said, did you do that with her? Mm. He said, you should have brought her to the sink. So just yeah. dealing with the yeah. person just to tell people that they are wrong, it's not the solution. Mm. Well, some people, maybe you can sit and counsel them right. and help them because they're under the, that some kind of, uh, uh, they're not necessarily, everybody's under the operation no, of the. No, they just need the good advice. Maybe they, they need some advice. Maybe they have gone through some trials and tribulation. Maybe they're operating under, there's some stronghold, right. and which that also can be related, to, uh, could be operated under demonic forces. But there are people you can sit and counsel with them or as you're teaching them the Word of God, they come to have a revelation. The Word of God give them a revelation, and they go, okay, now I got it. Now I know what right. to do. But then there are people that it no matter how you try so hard, but it's like when they are fully under the operations of some, which I had. I had right. people in my life. And God, in my dream, clearly showed me that don't fight with that person. Don't try to change that person. I had seven dreams. Mm -hmm. And I kept asking God, why this spirit in that dream with this person is a woman? Why it's not a man? And God said, because it's the spirit of Jezebel. Mm. Wow. Seven dreams I had about this individual in our church. Mm. And, and it was one of my family members. Mm. And God said, 
your battle is not with him. Your battle is with the spirit. Keep loving on him, but you need to start to know how to fight with that spirit. You need to cast out that spirit. You need to get that. And that person is healed, restored today. Mm. When you know how to deal with the uh, spiritual issue, then you can help the person on the physical issue. Yeah. yeah. Our spiritual uh, eyes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because if we, mm-hmm. if we got kind of dealing only with the uh, physical issue and try to be angry with the people, upset with the mm-hmm. people, so not much we can help. Because no. when you just kind of like looking with the regular eyes and see the regular things, you know, you cannot help the people. Well, that's why marriages fall apart. Exactly. That's why we lose our children, even uh, parents, or they don't know how to help their children. And that's why we lose members in our church, because that's why Paul clearly says in Ephesians, it's very clear, says our battle is not with the um, flesh and blood. It's with principality, demonic forces, and, right. you know, and you know that scripture. But anyway, so if we do not recognize that in our relationship, yeah. Then it come a day that we find ourselves like wondering why I cannot be in a relationship with anybody because it's not the people, it's me as 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 a child of God, as a as a leader, I need to know how to fight my battle. As a, and, and as a Christian, we need to learn how to fight our battle and how to overcome our battle instead of losing our loved one, instead of uh, coming to a place of a divorce instead of losing our children, we need to recognize the spirit that is at work, that right. a spirit is coming to kill, to destroy, and to divide. And that's what the first most greatest thing the church needs to learn to, to discern who's at work. If, the, if we learn that today, even look at the division among churches. Yes. Look at the division among families. Look at the division among believers of God. Who's at work? Right. It's the spirit. Yes. If we don't recognize that as spirit, we're constantly fighting with each other. Right. And we can't not really see the truth. And we're wondering why we're so divided. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really, it, it, and today, I believe if God's church, and it doesn't have to be in a huge army, with Gideon army, God only picked out of 30,300. If today those are really coming to grasp on this truth, just coming together and praying, coming against the forces that coming against our government, our president, our nation, our church, our family, we need to learn how to... That we would see to, clearly the picture. Yes. If we rise up, come on. We are the the body of Christ on earth that given all the authority that his vehicle on earth to bind all that demonic forces and to bring the kingdom of God that he's planned that it's in heaven and it's already finished. Jesus said it is finished. So for right. us that it's on us to bring it from heaven on earth. That's how we pray. Your kingdom come and your will be done. It's Amen. on us. Okay, ladies, we already been more than one hour on air and, uh, and I know we can continue talking. Amen. If somebody will bring us some steak salad, we can continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm happy. <laughs> but uh, but uh, anyway, since there is not the case, we uh, I have a few more, uh, or maybe one more question to you, Pastor Kadisha. What are your challenges today as a pastor who were... Um, coming from Muslim family, being atheist, and then became a Christian. And now, today, when you are in your 60s, being a pastor, still having a husband, and uh, serving the churches, of, what are your greatest challenges today? Uh, you know, there are a lot of challenges, but I hate to say this. I don't know why I feel I'm it's still challenged because I'm a woman. 
even in God's church. So would you be prefer to be a man? No. <laughs> no, I'm proud to be a woman. And I'm, I love being a woman. And, and especially because God actually, he clearly... So you are just saying, I understand your point. I'm just laughing, you know, but I, I understand know. your point that church still is not at the best point to acknowledge or understand the woman part of the ministry and still despise the woman. That's what you're going to say. Yeah, because like that you I feel can, I'm cannot still, go to the full force well, to I'm serve. I'm still limited. Yeah. I'm limited. Even though my husband is my covering, and, and for me, he couldn't be here today. Amazing man of God, and he right. fully supports what God put in my heart and my life, and I have his blessing. So he said, I bless you, you go. But I'm not coming. But anyway, um, my point is that I have my husband blessing, but this is the same man that he believed women cannot be pastor. Mm. Women cannot lead a church. But he believed now, right? No, God, God, all Changed I had it. to do, pray. Mm -hmm. And God did it. That's what I'm saying. We have to allow Holy Spirit do the work. Right. Our job is to love and pray. Love and pray. Love and pray. Right. Then the right. Spirit of God will transform. When we, uh, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit is the one thing, but being an obedient to the Holy Spirit. Yes. So when you fully want to submit to the Holy Spirit yes. with all your love, with all your mind, with all your heart, then he will lead you and help you how to, through your challenges, through your battle, through your trials, then you're in fire, mm. then you're in the deepest pit like Joseph, mm. then you're in a fire like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. He says, I am with you if you let me use you so I can be glorified in your life, so people can see me in your midst of your trials, in your tribulation, did through you, I want to show people I'm God. Through you, I want to show people my love. And, and it's really, it's all about walking with him, listening to him, and obeying him. Pastor Kadisha, uh, I want to ask you, what would you want to say to those who watch us, some mm -hmm. people? What kind of advice in your heart or prayer would you do for the people? If you just look at the camera you have in front of you okay. and talk to the people outside this gathering, the, this gathering, right? All I wanted to say with, by my, through my own testimony that I share, that God is love. God is love. You cannot do anything in your life, in, your, in this world, that was that would separate you from that love. He's always loved. He always loved you. All you have to do, if you don't know who this true God is, this living God, that he is love, and he loves you so much that he will move heaven on earth to tell you who he is. He will move heaven on earth to bring you out of darkness. And that's why he paid a great cost on that cross. And for me, with my experience, if he, God came into my life that was absolute ignorant, lost, shattered woman, to just say, I love you, and, and I want to redeem you, I want to restore you. So I tell you today, I encourage you today, I beg you today, just go to him. You don't need anybody to tell you who God is. You don't need to do anything to come to understand who God is. Just come to himself. Just ask him. Just come to him empty. Empty yourself of whatever you believe, whatever you learn. Just come to him and say, I want to, God, you tell me who you are. You tell me the mystery of your cross, the mystery of your son. If you don't understand who Jesus is and the cross is, the Trinity of God. Believe me, if you come to him and ask him, he will tell you. But the second thing is when you hear his voice and you have vision or dream, again, I'm begging you, go study his word. Go find a, a, a church that God leads you. Go to that church, connect to the body of Christ, 
and let the people, your pastors, the people in that church, to teach you, to help you, to equip you, just like a lot of pastors and my pastor did for me and, and many other people that came into my life through the college that I went that tell me, uh, taught me the word of God. Connect with the body of Christ. Connect with the word of God. That you eventually, God loves you so much. As you study his word, he gives you the revelation of his word and he himself, but above all, he will give you the revelation of who you are. You will find who you are. Then you find who you are, then you're free. Then you're no longer walking to proving yourself to anybody. You are set free. You know who you are. You will fly like a butterfly every day and just with joy, with peace, with love. And you don't have to really do it on your own power. God promised you. He said, when you come to me through hardship, through confusion, through battle, then you're able to go through it with his power and come out of it victoriously with his power because he loves you. And when that love consumes you, do you know the first person you end up loving is yourself? I think that is the greatest miracle because of what all the things that happen in our lives, the enemy, the, the spirit, demonic forces, we use it to make you to not to like yourself. So the first thing happens when the, you are empowered with God's love, you forgive yourself, you love yourself, and then you love others. Thank you, Pastor Kadisha. Uh, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad had a wife, Kadisha, and we have a Pastor <laughs> Kadisha. So uh, we are blessed to have this talk show with you today. And I was blessed to be here. And nice talk. discussion. We wanted to hear your testimony. Thank you, and, Pastor, uh, for inviting me, uh, Pastor Elena. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. We, we are blessed. Elena, want to add something? I would like to wrap it up. Do you want to add something to oh, this? Thank you so much, Pastor Kadisha. We appreciate for coming, oh. for your testimony. Uh, and this is a miracle itself, what God, yes. how God mm. used you and uh, show many other people to show when, uh, that... Uh, Jesus is the only truth. It's so Amen. tremendous job what you are doing. The only way, right? Yes, this is the only way to heaven. Only Jesus way. Jesus Christ. Only yes. him. That's his place. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that is his place. And yes. only through his way, not our way, not the religious way, only through his way we can and enter to his we kingdom. accept him in our life. We know and we have this insurance that when he calls me to heaven, I am ready anytime. Amen. On, only we can have only with Jesus. When we know Jesus Amen. and we accept him in our life as a savior, a personal savior. Amen. Amen. I agree with this and I want to add um, uh, again from coming back to the Romans chapter 10. Amen. And Apostle uh, Paul is saying, For it is by believing in your heart mm. that you are made right with God. Mm. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Amen. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Disgraced. That is so interesting is that Paul is saying for... If you declare, you know, so not, not too much needed. People try to reach God, you know, like I say that, you know, Christianity is not the religion, it's a relationship. Christianity, when God attempts to reach a man, the Muslim religion is when uh, men try to reach God. That's so right, that's good. People that's try good. to please God, to pray enough, to be good, to good. follow all these ordinances and laws. And at the end of the story, being teaching people for 50 years in their life, like your dad was, at the end of the story, they don't have assurance if they are themselves being good enough to be accepted in heaven. Will they be accepted? Will they be forgiven? 
they don't have this assurance because this assurance gives only the word of God. That's only right. only That's Jesus, good. the Son of God, being God himself, only he is giving us. And Paul got this revelation and he says, listen, for it is by believing only, not by doing something. Even That's in the church, good. people That's try good. to do something. They say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be better than others. And by this, I will please God. That's right. But Paul is saying, but for it is by believing in your heart. So how far you need to go? To your heart. That's good. So, and I am saying uh, that you are made right with God. I do believe that I am made right with God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not by my own deeds, my works. No matter how I can think I'm good, I'm good enough or this and this. No, none of us can do this. But Jesus said, listen, if you believe in me, I've done everything. I have you covered. Amen. You know, Amen. he has us covered already by his blood. It's already done. That our sins are forgiven. That I do not have to be afraid when I'm going to come to heaven before the judgment throne. And I'm going to be saying, oh, my goodness, what God going to say? What God going to say? When, when you go to the exam and you say, I don't know if I'm going to pass, if I'm going to pass, I don't know. Then you wait for the result. He yeah. gives us assurance already. You say, uh, it's already done. Everything is paid. Everything is covered. Now I'm going to leave to prepare a place for you. So when I come back, I will take you that you would be together with me. So don't worry. Amen. Everything is covered. I have you covered. Listen, we have to answer before the Lord for our sin. Everybody. But Jesus said, but if you believe in me, I covered you already. Amen. I put you in a, in a list of covered, covered, covered. So those who covered, those do not have to answer for their sins. Mm -hmm. They do not have to come before the judgment throne and say, okay, well, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to be cross-examined. Vassal, what have you done there here? Why did you do this? Okay. Yes. Well, he, that's not going to be the case mm -hmm. because my sins have been washed away because I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's why we need the blood that's good. of Jesus. So well, I was talking to one of the, uh, my friend, he's a Muslim, and I'm saying, listen, but how you say when you're going to come to heaven? Because you say, we believe only one God. We don't need any, you know, mediator, mediator for us. Uh, we're going to come before not, not any idol like you guys. You need the Jesus. I say, Jesus not, is not an idol. But let me ask you this question. Do you believe that God is good? I do believe. Do, do I believe that God is just? Yes, I do believe. Do, do you believe that God can forgive? Yes. But how can you reconcile the forgiveness and, and uh, justness? How can be just and at the same time to forgive you? And he's saying, well, he can forgive. Of course he can forgive. But then how can we be just? For instance, let me give you the example. I say, my friend, he's a Muslim uh, friend of mine. And, and, he, and I'm saying, listen, can you imagine your sister and your mother was raped by some kind of gangster? And uh, he killed them. He murdered them. He tortured them. Nothing you could have helped them. You know, they died terribly. Mm. What do you expect for this guy who did this? You expect justice? Because I expect justice for this guy, right? And I say, if you expect justice, then you don't expect him to be forgiven. Because if you think that he should be forgiven, then where is justice? I think this guy deserves justice. But maybe he also expects to be forgiven. How you can reconcile these two things? You know, mm -hmm. I'm a kind of accountant and I'm a mathematic guy. Everything with me has to be reconciled. Mm -hmm. When I reconcile bank accounts and I reconcile everything, yeah. if I don't reconcile this, then I don't know if this is correct. You know? That's right. So I say, how we can reconcile it? And I say, well, I don't know. I say, well, you expect that this guy would be punished for his deeds, right? For your sister, for your mother, or maybe for your wife, for people who you dearly loved. And you cannot punish him. You expect that God will punish him because God is just, okay? But if he's just, do you believe that you did something wrong and he can need to punish you? Mm. Well, or you think you are 
just sinless, never did anything perfect. wrong, perfect. I said, no, I'm not a perfect. Then do you believe that just God ha has to punish you as well in order to being just in, in eyes of this guy who was raper and murderer and you that he is just completely. He's pun he need to punish you properly. Yeah, I, I do believe he need to punish you, but then how you can come before the throne if you know you only can be punished? Mm. How you can be forgiven? You know, you can be forgiven no. because you say, oh, listen, listen, I have a good feelings right now. I had a good lunch, good coffee. I'm gonna forgive you guys. And he's gonna forgive your murderer. The, the one who murdered your sister, mm -hmm. your mother, your wife. What would you say about this judge? Is he just? You would say, you're not the judge. You're not just. How can you let this guy go? Not punished. And am I right? And he said, yeah, you are right. But then how you can say that he will, you will escape not mm -hmm. being punished? And he said, I don't know. I oh, will go there. Whatever he wants to do, he will do it. You say, and I'm telling him, listen, but you can be sure today to be forgiven. And how you can be forgiven? If you believe in Christ. Amen. Because he took your already punishment on himself. Amen. He being a perfect man became a perfect sacrifice and a priest for you. Amen. And he's saying, I don't know. I, I, I can't believe in this. I say, yes. well, you can't believe in this because you never studied you never look into this. You need to look into this. And when you look into this, you can learn yourself that you can have your faith. So then we were talking a lot, a lot of things. And I think because that part of it is they really believe we have to work for our salvation. Right. Because religious, they're, they're teaching them that you have to do something. Mary, you, you, your good deeds need to outweigh yeah. the bad deeds. There was one of the Iranian pastors in Iran. He's so hilarious. He was, he's one of the, like a father, Pastor Edward mm. uh, of the church. And he said, you know, his brother was martyred, uh, Hike Hosepian. Mm. His brother Edward is in England. And he said, he said, one time one Muslim came to Christ in their church. And he said, that's it? He said, yeah. He said, no, I got to do something. And the pastor said, you want to do something? He said, yeah, I have to do something. I just, that's like that. He said, okay, I want you to go upstairs and downstairs for 50 times. Go upstairs and come downstairs so you'll be forgiven. And he said the guy was so ignorant. They believe that. <laughs> he started going upstairs. <laughs> Well, has to do something, right? Yeah, that's the problem. Need to pay somehow the price. He said he felt like he has to do something in order to be saved. Yeah. He couldn't believe that grace, that the free gift of salvation, that God did it all. And that's where it all goes down to what? To the pride of man. Yeah. It's exactly. all rooted in the pride. Because I, I need to be... I need to pay it, and I need to tell I paid it, that's mine. Yeah, so I come to Elena and say, see, look at me. I did all this work because yeah. that's what the religious people are all about. Right. So they can boast about. Boast. But somebody said there will be no boasting in heaven. That's exactly. That's and why God, God said. Took, that God took that away from us. Right. You cannot don't, boast. Don't boast about it. And that's in Paul teaching it in Romans. Because he says if you can buy salvation yourself, then you need to pay for this. Yeah. Exactly. And the payment, and the payment is death. It's and it's death. not regular death, it's eternal death. Eternal death. So exactly. if you pay with eternal death, then you cannot enjoy it. Like you would say, sell me this building. I say, I can sell you this building, but the price of this building is to kill you. Exactly. Then you're not going to enjoy the building. No. After I kill you, say, I'm going to pay it. But then why do you need the building, you know? So that's, that's, that's really serious. Yeah. God is saying the price of the sin is death, wages of sin. Wages of sin is death. And uh, if, if you're going to pay these wages, if you're going to be paid these wages, then you're going to die. You're going to have to die. And for eternally die. Eternal. And you cannot be resurrected like Jesus no. was because he was not guilty of anything. No. Then he could come back. But we can come back. So the only thing is he how we can... He was a perfect sacrifice perfect sacrifice so anyway i want to wrap it up here uh my precious we're gonna wrap it up here we've been uh, 
uh, for one hour and a half already on air. And oh, it's been an hour and so a half. <laughs> and I know the video was a few times interrupted, but there's, there was continuing resetting themselves. Okay. Uh, but it's there on my page. And uh, we have it recorded as well. So what I want to say, uh, what I want to say, so listen, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you at this moment together with the, this precious uh, uh, woman, pray. servants of God, the pastors and leaders who are leading many, and I'm blessed today being surrounded with this uh, beautiful you. servant of God, you know? Mm -hmm. And we do believe that to serve the church, we only need to serve together. Amen to So that. I cannot serve only myself. Amen. Christianity is not the man's religion. No. No. Christianity is the relationship with God when man and woman become a bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's easy for women to say I'm the bride, but it's hard for men to say I'm the bride because I'm a man. How can I be a bride? But in the body of Christ, a man is a bride of Jesus Christ yes. also. Anyway, if you, have a, yeah, if, you have, if you have a problem with this, you need to read your Bible and study the Word of God. But only together, yes. as man and woman together. Because the Bible says in Christ that there is no man or woman. But we are one body of Christ, united mm. through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ himself, we are united. Amen. And... Uh, that's why we need to hear. We need to have a voice of man and woman. That's why today Pastor Kalisha talked the most. Usually I do the most. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I talk the most, I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry because we wanted you to talk. Yeah, That's why we invited you. You ask me and I answer your questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pastor Thank Kalisha, you. for really, talking to what us. What an honor and privilege to be here with both of you. You both are just so precious. You have an incredible, powerful ministry. Uh, thank you very much. So, and looking forward to do more together. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're always open. And we want to be using these tools which God has yes. given us, the media. Yes. Well, I, um, I'm saying all the time, listen, I can bring you my preaching directly to your cell phone. So we never had this opportunity. Yes. And I remember whatever he had started, uh, there was some kind of link. Somebody shared it, but nobody couldn't find it. But now I can send to you oh, that's directly awesome. that's like, awesome. around the globe. It doesn't matter yeah. where you live at, you know, what country you are. So this is the beauty of the, of the live last awesome. days, the technology which we're going to be using. Anyway, uh, if you never, you know, I want to finish this uh, this this program, but I don't want to finish this program without giving you an opportunity to receive Christ into your heart, to invite Christ into your heart. Listen, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Prepare yourself for heaven. I know you can accidentally get to hell, but you will not accidentally get to heaven. Mm -hmm. You need to ask personally with your mouth, saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want you, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. And I want to give you this opportunity right now to pray with me this simple prayer. Just simply close your eyes and say, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. I repent of my sins. Please enter into my heart. Change my life. I will make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. My precious friend, if you prayed with me this simple prayer, I believe you became a born again. The only thing what you need to believe in your heart and to confess with your mouth and to receive and invite Jesus Christ into your heart and your life will be changed not by you, but by him, self yeah. alone, by Christ alone. And if you want to be saved, start yes. at this moment reading your Bible. Yes. You need to do it every day. Pray every day. Talk to God. Tell him everything you want to tell him.
talk to him. And believe me, he will talk to you back because mm -hmm. prayer is a conversation. God will talk to you. And the last one, find a Bible-based church and fellowship with other saints, with other believers. Your life will change. You will never be the same. Prepare yourself for the prepared place, which call eternity. Yeah. You want to spend your life, your eternity with Christ himself, the one who really and dearly loves you and wants you to be in heaven with him in eternity. Mm. And I want to pray for you at this moment. If you need anything, if you need, if you need a healing or you need your life to be changed, God would touch you right now. Just stretch your hand towards the screen and pray with me. And I pray, Lord Jesus, I ask you to bless my friend who watches me right now, who are with me to, to this moment in the name of Jesus. I pray that healing would come into the room of my friend. No matter what the, what the need is, no matter what the sickness is, yes. I declare a healing and restoration just through the screen. I command any sickness, any illness, any attack, including a coronavirus attack. I pray in the name of Jesus and I command any sickness, any COVID-19, anything else, Get out in the name of Jesus, out of my friend's life, out of anybody, even those who don't know me, but just accidentally watch this program in the name of Jesus. And I declare salvation, restoration, healing, and blessing in almighty name of Jesus. Lord, I give you glory. I praise your name. And I say I love you. And I love you forever. In Jesus' name of prayer. Amen. Amen. I will see you again. We are finishing our program today. I hope you enjoy it. There is a lot of things to think about. May the Lord bless you and bless you abundantly. Bye-bye.